You're listening to Punisher Waterfowls, the Union 0430 podcast. Brought to you by Real Geese Decoys, the most technologically advanced silhouette decoy on the market. First Light, the best hunting gear on the planet. Go farther, stay longer. And Duck Lander Calls, tradition, education, and quality. Built to hunt. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Union 0430 episode 168 and we got a doozy for you tonight. We got Ryan Clark from Swamp Ox jumping on with us and if you haven't heard of this company, um, you, you're about to get it being for a good treat. So um, before we kick off, Mark's up in the top left hand corner coming to us all the way from Nova Scotia. Philly is down in Port Perry in my bottom left hand corner. We got Ryan Clark in the bottom right hand corner coming to us from our Arkansas, and I'm just outside Kingston, Ontario. Um, everybody, please subscribe, ring the bell, smash buttons. I don't give a fuck what it is you got to do, but we need subscribers. So subscribe, like, all that stuff. Tell your mom, tell your dad. Um, spread the word. Pay for a plane to pull a banner across the sky. I don't care. Um, We're not desperate. Yeah, we're not desperate. We're not desperate at all. Um, but this is really cool. And and Ryan, I got to tell you, because I'm not sure if, if you're fully aware of how um I came to know about you and Swamp Ox, but Phil, um, just October, Philly. So two months ago. Yeah, it was the last last weekend in October. Yeah, so the last week in October, Philly is down um with Tony Vandemore with Habitat Flats, and he's down okay. hunting with him. And Philly's like he sees all these all these racks all these swamp box wrap racks on on the uh side by sides and and utvs and all this stuff right and he was like what the fuck is this and so he starts looking into it and, and researching a little bit and then of course he reaches out and and he's talking to your lovely wife hannah and and you know here we are um and there there you go and mark is here and thank god he's here oh we're looking at 450 mark oh wrong one yeah, wrong one, buddy. We're looking at the flight line right there of Chinooks. <laughs> so, um, so Ryan, buddy, um, thanks so much for coming on. I know you're super busy, and uh, and you you're just coming off a great hunt. So, um, before we get into looking at the the gear there, Mark, uh, with with Swamp Box, um, let's talk about this crane hunt, buddy, that you were on just recently because that looked like an awful good time man and first appreciate the invite for getting on the podcast and yeah the hunt was amazing um uh, it's prey bomb outfielders out of amarillo texas uh vince is the owner of it um we hunted with a couple great i say kids one was 21 the other one was 23 those were our guides and it was absolutely wonderful first time i've ever been on a crane hunt so my expectations were kind of in between low and high i didn't really know what was going to happen uh, Saturday morning, we had probably 5,000, 6,000 birds flying around us at sunup. Uh, wow. Absolutely unreal. The sky literally turned black when they got up off the roost. Uh, the roost was between us and the sun uh, facing east, and they just came up and just kept coming and coming and coming. And we actually had – we were three birds shy of a nine-man limit by 8.30 that morning. And then it took another <laughs> two and a half hours to get the final three birds. It was what, torture for, I mean, just torture for those last couple hours. What's your, uh, what's your uh, personal limit for crane down there? What is it, three birds? Three birds apiece. Three yeah, birds three apiece, bird. yes, sir. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, shit, man, 27 birds. Well, so 24 birds by 8.30? 24 by 8.30, and then, like I said, those last three just drug by. It would, Great time in the blunt. We were with some good people from the East Coast and down in Florida. And, yeah. I mean, so we were laughing, joking the whole time. Never even realized two hours had passed by. And then we started counting everything up and realized we were three short. And finally, we had the last three kind of work in um, and finished it out that morning. So, it was great. Wow. So, I'm going to have to plug, I'm gonna have to plug Vince and them, man. If you're ever looking yeah, for absolutely. a crane hunt, those guys down at Prairie Bomb, uh, they do a great, great job down there in Texas. I'm gonna write that down because I'll uh, I'll I'll tag them uh, when I make the post and everything. So Prairie oh, Bomb, 
Prairie Balm, yes, sir. Prairie okay. Balm Outfitters. Um, yeah, so a couple hours, that's a nice little break to cool the guns and, and have a have a cigarette and, and fill up your coffee and, and poke fun at fellas who miss shots and stuff like that and then get ready for the final three, right? Oh, yeah, and unfortunately, the last one before the break was a solo that came kind of in behind the blind, and I whiffed on the first two shots and then finally connected on the third one. And yeah, so two hours of hell getting tortured about missing two shots out of the three. So I was the unlucky one that morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's funny because, you know, to anybody, I've, I've only ever hunted crane once and I've only ever shot one. Um, and, and that's debatable because I think there was a bunch of us that all pulled up and shot. I'm claiming I shot it. And I think there was a couple other fellows that claimed that they may have got it too. So it's, uh, that was kind of like the snow goose hunt last year. <laughs> yeah. One one bird, he would long dead before he hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like you think about it, like it's a big bird, it's a big target that that's coming in at you, and you think that those things you'd just be able to knock those things down easy, but they're not so easy. Well, yeah. I've had a couple people ask me about it uh just this week and i told him i said they're easier to knock down than geese are uh a goose is a lot harder to get on the on the ground uh just because you can clip those wings so easily and, and pull it down but right. but uh the first volley saturday morning that went down or that we shot i think we dropped I believe eight out of the first volley we had one that drifted out about 300 yards one that was about 200 couple about 150 and four a little closer so the guys broke loose. Me and another guy with the blind took off after him and uh, ran by one that was not quite dead. So I grabbed it, wrung his neck, and I took off after another one at 150. I got about three feet away from it, and it popped up and hissed like a bobcat would or something at me. <laughs> Stopped me dead in my tracks. I was like, guys, what the, what the hell is this, man? And uh, they were just yelling, kicking in the head, just kicking in the head. I'm like, no, oh, you're funny. They're like, no, 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 like definitely do it. Do not grab that bird, you know. Yeah. So I finally got Poke a your eyes out. <laughs> oh man, that's what they were telling us. They don't even take their dogs with them because no, there's no. been horror stories <clears throat> of dogs getting. I've heard that. Yeah, uh, getting whooped by them pretty bad. So and Ryan, I'm going to tell you, buddy. Like I can really only see your shoulders and head, but you look like a big no. dude. And um, I, if, <laughs> if you're <laughs> chugging across that, the, if you're chugging across that field chasing them birds down, like you're working for it too, and. And uh, I'm a fairly, I'm a half decent sized lad myself. So uh, I don't know. I'd be all in by the time I got to that bird and I wouldn't be screwing around. I don't think. Brother, that was, that's the first time I've done a hundred yard sprint since I was probably in, well, at least playing college baseball. And that's been, that's been 12, 13 years ago. And the other gentleman that ran out of the blind with me, he's built about like me, not quite as heavy. And we both got back to the blind huff and puff, and I was still choking like I smoked a pack of cigarettes a day that night. I mean, <laughs> got up the next morning. I'm like, man, I feel like I got hit by a truck. Yeah, 100-yard yeah. dash, and that's what got me? Come on. <laughs> so it's definitely, yeah. definitely made for smaller people when you get out there running across those fields. <laughs> I love that stuff, eh? I, I remember was with, uh, like, Merck. Um, I'll be walking around the woods with Merck and stuff when he, when he lived close by, and and I'm always dragging behind them. Eh? Merck is always out walking around and climbing over stuff in the woods and stuff like that. And I just couldn't keep up with them. Eh? And, and, and I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, man, fuck this. I got to get back in shape back, back to my days of being in the army and, and being in shape and sh shit like that. And, and I'd convince myself. And then Mark to throw like a big bag of Lay's potato chips towards me. And I'm like, yeah, I'll start, I'll start that tomorrow. Fuck hey, that. Don't, not... <laughs> don't ever forget. Round is a shape. Right. It is a shape. It is a shape. You are correct. Train for the downhills. <laughs> yeah. Round. I could definitely roll downhill. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt, buddy. No, that's awesome, that's our, man. That's our token Simpsons reference for the show. There you go. I like it. I'm in shape. Round is a shape. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Philly, did you have you have you hunted crane when you were out west? Did you guys no, hunt well, crane? We, we never really targeted them. Um, We'd seen some, so like the house that we rented for the week that we stayed in, like you could get the binos out and like you could literally scan the horizon and see like Newfoundland because it's so fucking flat. Yeah. Um, but we'd seen flocks um, a couple fields over, like there was a bit of a valley at the front door. 
yeah, like the front door, a bit of a valley. So you could see like she had a kilometer. And we'd seen a pile out in the field. Like I couldn't tell you how many were there. I don't know, a couple dozen, hundred, whatever it was. Right. Um, but like actively hunting, like we actually we primarily targeted ducks when we were out there. Right. Um, but we never saw a single crane come through like our spread or whatever. Really? You know, we'd seen some here and there and like I've seen if actually a few flocks fly over what was the field that I took you and Mark to? Right. I've seen two flocks fly over that field. We've yeah, had the fuck are they hundreds, and hundreds of them around really? the Ottawa Valley. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's we're starting hundreds to get numbers of, of them now. Thousands, so, but hundreds. So Ryan <laughs> uh historically, Island is yeah. like loaded up. Yeah. yeah. So Ryan, historically, we haven't in in Ontario, we haven't been seeing crane, and then all of a sudden, in the last um, in the last ten years, we're starting to see them, um, and their population is, is growing. We're nowhere near, I don't think, uh, anywhere near the numbers where we're going to be able to have a hunt. Um, gotcha. But but if it's if it's managed properly, you know, maybe someday down the road we will get to have a we'll get to have a you know, a crane hunt because it wasn't and and Merck and Phil, you guys could probably educate me on this, but I don't know how long ago it was, but there was no turkey here in, in Ontario. And and now like wild turkey. Uh, it wasn't that long. That was twenty, twenty five years ago when they repopulated those. Yeah. The big the big re reintroduction I think was like the late eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Late eighties, so, early nineties maybe. It's actually yeah. like it's been known as to be like hands down like the most successful animal reintroduction non-human thing reintroduction program like in existence well i don't know I'm surprised they can survive up there always as cold as it gets well yeah like i don't know man like yeah like well i don't know about northern ontario so like where i am like down on like the southern the southeastern part of ontario like there's no difference like it's only, I don't know, from me to New York or like from my house to the border, it's probably like three kilometers. So, oh, so okay. So yeah, your environment's a little different than I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. more Northern where it stayed yeah. a little colder year round. Yeah. Um, well, I we, like where we, where we moose hunt up in Thunder Bay. Yeah. So for you, Ryan, Thunder Bay is like the North shore of Lake Superior. Um, I've seen turkey tracks up where we moose hunt. And that's like an hour and a half northwest of Thunder Bay. I've gotcha. already gotcha. spent too much time talking about turkey on this show. And not, <laughs> and not, and not, and not too ducks. bad. Dude. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I could tell, I could talk about any type of hunting. I've, I've been hunting my whole life and everything from deer, rabbit, raccoon, squirrel. Uh, all the way to turkey hunting, and now I guess officially sandhill. Sandhill crane hunting. How was uh, uh, that? How was your too now? How was your duck numbers in in Arkansas this year? <sighs> if you look at the report, reports, they seem good. Uh, we actually have a farm down in Stuttgart. We have about two hundred acres down there, a little closer to Humphreys, um, and we're kind of stuck in a little bit of a bad spot. So Balmeda, wherever what we call the shooting grounds. The public hunting where everybody just dreams about going hunting they're about five five six miles from the closest point of the wma to our corner uh but right beside us uh, uh abf arkansas best freight actually has land and okay. they have around 250 300 acre rice field that they actually don't hunt it's 100 percent rest area and so you know we'll sit there and watch two three thousand birds a morning cup right over us head a quarter mile past us go right in that field and then you don't see them again until right before roost and they're flying back across our slough so um i officially i don't know because i haven't talked to enough guys over there right yeah uh, but from what i've seen it seems like the numbers are higher at least know our speckle belly numbers are higher because we uh got bumped up to three per person per day as opposed to we've been at two for i think last 10 15 years so okay okay all right buddy Let's get in. Let's talk. Let's talk swamp box. Cause listen, I don't own a UTV, a side by side, but I want to see about swamp box. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you that liquor cart, I'm I'd like, I'm just looking, I could almost, I could almost justify the cost of the cart. 
I just wouldn't be able to justify the cost of the ship, the fucking thing to Canada. I couldn't even uh, imagine what that would cost to get to Canada. You know, the crazy part is we've that. actually Look. shipped, we've shipped stuff, uh, full rack systems up to Alaska. So it is expensive, but it's yep. not at, well, Alaska was really expensive just the way the ports work. But, right. um, uh, so that, that cart, I do off the top of my head, I don't know the overall size of it, but as you can yeah. see, it comes with C deck on it. Uh, holds quite a bit, quite a bit of liquor and, uh, your choice of what to put on top of it. Um, uh, I think we still have a couple sitting around the shop. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent for sure. Uh, we may have sold out the last one and then just never restocked. I'll be honest with you. It's awesome, man. Like I, I look at it and like I said, before uh, mm. we start recording if, if that doesn't want you to get shit face loaded drunk. I don't know what it is, but like it, it looks like it's built for a man. It's built for a man cave. Like it's built it for in, in the garage, right? Oh yeah, man. Uh, so the guy that actually uh, owns our property where our shop and stuff is, uh, he has one in his man cave. Uh, whenever we do a trade show, we normally would take one with us. And it's always a talking point because you always have that one guy that really doesn't care about the racks and walks up and is like, I want that. I'm like, it's for sale, you know? <laughs> so, uh, cause you put, you put liquor on anything and you always have a, have a guy walk up, start asking questions about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well, the Chris, that, that'll just make you sell anything. <laughs> yes, but, that is true. Yeah. No, absolutely. But, um, but Philly, like, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about at, at Habitat Flats and, <clears throat> and you saying, so, you know, obviously Ryan's going to come on here and he's going to talk about how awesome the products are and, and stuff like that. And, and, and that's his job, right? That's what he's supposed to do. Um, but you, you know, you, you seen it firsthand down there and, and you're riding around in the side by sides coming from the lodge out to the blinds every day and the gear hooked up and, and, and everything, you know, tell me, tell us a, a little bit. We'll, we'll get to Ryan when he can tell us all about how awesome it is, but I'd love to hear your point of view <laughs> on it. Well, like obviously, you're, you're duck hunting in Missouri and Arkansas, just like the culture and everything. It's night and day different in comparison to what we have up here. Right. Um, <clears throat> so being down at Tony's place, um, they've got – I actually asked Tony one day. I'm like, how many side-by-sides do you guys have? And they're like, 24. 24? 24 fucking side by eaches. <laughs> And they run them for a year yeah. and then flip them. Yeah. So every year it's a brand new side by each. Yeah. Um, now, like, out of the pile that we saw, because they got prop, like, they, they le legitimately have side by side stashed in the bushes fucking everywhere. Like, there's places where, like, um, some of the guys will run out of the side by side straight from where the lodge is. There's other places, like, we drove to the, um, it's actually like, the guide's house. So all the guides that work for Tony, like they have a house and that's where they stay. Cause there's guys that like they commute in from like two, okay. three, 10 hours away. So there's side by sides there. You'll drive out into the middle of the fucking bush and there's a sea can cut open and there's three more side by sides. And <laughs> so a good portion of the, the side by sides that Tony has, you've got the swamp box racks on. And the nice thing is, is it basically doubles your ability to carry stuff. Right. Because like there's some some of the uh, some of the blinds we went to, like especially when we went to the guide's house, parked the trucks there, jumped in the side by sides. It's like a I don't know, three, four mile drive from the house to where the blinds are. Yeah. So, you know, you're running well, we were a party of four. And you've seen some of the videos and stuff where, like, there's like five, six, seven guys, clients running in a blind. So you've got a dog, sometimes two. So you have like a gunner in the back of the in the box in the side by side. So now you've got X number of guns, X number of blind bags. Some guys are running coolers, like the guys, because like you know they're bringing snacks and drinks and stuff out for the clients. Mm -hmm. um, heading back from the blind to like where your trucks are, like you can hang your, your straps of ducks off these things. Um, there was one day, Trevor Davidson and I, we went into town. That's what you want to call it. <laughs> There's like literally a gas station in Sumner, Missouri. So we wheel in there, grab some stuff and whatnot. And like literally guys just appear out of like nowhere. 
and it's a bunch of duck hunters on a side by side. Well, guess what? They have a swamp box on the back of their side by side. And again, they've got blind bags jammed in there, guns. They've got, you know, for guys that are running and gunning through the bushes and doing like these public land hunts, they've got piles of decoys hanging off this thing. So like just the absolute versatility and ability like to double, if not triple, the amount of shit you can carry without like having like have a second side by side. Right. Or have like a trailer or a sled or whatever else. Like it's just it's an absolute genius idea. Like Ryan, um, is, is the reasoning behind it, um, obviously it's, it's for load carriage, um, but is, is the reasoning behind the racks so that it doesn't take away anything of the structural strength of the, of the machine itself? Is that, is that the idea behind it? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all about what Phil was talking about. I mean, just being able to maximize the amount of stuff you can carry in. The way our product works, you do you don't have to drill into any of your rigs. Our oh, bed mounted cab racks they go into fact or our cab mounted uh, bed racks go into the factory holes on both Can Am's and Polaris's. Our bed mounted racks actually uh, cap over your bed rails and then they bolt into the or they turnbuckle into your bed. So mm -hmm. uh, structurally wise, I mean they're yeah. they're strong. You know, we yeah. tell people on the cab mounted racks. Be smart about it. Don't you know? Don't throw six hundred pounds of deer corn up there and go out to a deer feeder and try to try to feed it all. You know, uh, but we've had a couple of guys my size, and I'm well about three hundred pounds, uh, hold on to the back of it and never have an issue out of it. Um, so it's really just maximizing the space and being able to to carry a lot more stuff. Uh, for example, when we're down in Amarillo crane hunt this past weekend, the field that we hunted on Friday was frozen over. When we got out there, it was down around 22 degrees, 23 degrees. Well, by the time we were getting ready to leave out, uh, it had thawed. So, and it was some of that old buckshot mud that just sticks to you and gets thick. So, we didn't want to bring the tandem action trailer back out there. Mm -hmm. So, they ended up loading out, I don't remember how many decoys we put out, but it took them nine trips. And that luckily they had a bed rack on there. So, because if they didn't have a bed rack, it probably would have been another five or six trips, you know, in and out of a field, 450, 500 yards. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's just, just to make it easier for you. That that's the whole point, the whole point of the yeah. rack. No, no, it, may, it it totally makes sense to me. And, and the fact that, you know, um, in a, in a place where duck hunting is, is such a way of life and, and from what Phil is saying, um, there's a need for it, obviously, right? Because or else people wouldn't have they wouldn't be spending their their hard earned money um, to get it um, if there wasn't a need for it. Because um, when when you start talking about stuff like this and and the dollar value that's attached to it, um, it goes beyond. Well, I'd like to have it. They're, they obviously need it, right? So so that that's right. the cool thing about it. Mark, you're a bit of a. I don't know. I don't know how to explain, but like. Things like that, like that's really your bag, right? Like, I, I don't know how technology or the gadgets and shit, gadgets and 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 things <laughs> and how it works and and strength and 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 beating the shit out of stuff like that. That's your thing. You guys market yourselves pretty good. When I'm looking at the uh, the all the different photos for the different uh, setups, that's uh, you're, you're out beating the shit out of this stuff. Like you're 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 doing. In the photos, you're doing what you want to do with this stuff so that it, if you're showing it to someone else, like I'm going to share one here now, and it's a, uh, it looks like a battery. Is that batteries? Yeah, those are, those are batteries. Um, There's one, two, three, four, five. And I think it's daybreak outdoors. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so that's our that's our bed extension. It gives you another three and a half feet off your uh, bed. It um, again it turnbuckles into your bed, so you don't have to actually physically mount it into the bed. One guy could actually pick that up and take it out and put it in. It weighs, you know, seventy five wow. pounds, eighty pounds. Uh, and then to go back to your structural convers our structural <laughs> conversation, it actually bolts into your ball hitch on the back of your rig so you get that underneath support and you don't have to worry about 
you know, oh, cool. it tilting or bending or anything else. So but that's got to be at least 400 pounds of battery sitting on that. At least, at least. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. That's pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> and that, like you're, there's no sag in that at all. eh? Yeah. Like as, when long, you're talking, as long as go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're talking about that, that, that structure support underneath there at the ball hitch and stuff, right? Like, like Mark saying, like there's 400 pounds of batteries on that, on that, at least, uh, at least on that extender. And there's, mm -hmm. there's no sag whatsoever in, in that extender. That's pretty impressive. Like it, it, it's obviously built right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what we take pride in. Um, you know, been around for a couple years now and, uh, we've only had a couple issues out of any of our product and it was, it honestly was people abusing the product and they were the cat mounted racks and a guy tried to tell us that, you know, he was just using it like daily use and <laughs> pretty sure he had a lot more than daily use stuff up there. He probably had four or 500 pounds, uh, sitting right. up there and the arm ended up collapsing on one side. So, yeah. uh, just the company that we are and what we believe in is building a great product. So the guy called us since photos. He finally owned up to a little bit of what he was actually doing. Uh, we built two new arms for it, reinforced them to better suit his yep. needs, sent them back to him, and that's been over a year and a half and haven't heard another word besides him sending photos to us of either hunting or working because he actually uses his more on his farm than he does for actually hunt, hunting right. purposes. Right. And and Definitely. yeah, what, go what type there. of metal are you guys using in these? So it's 080 Mer Green grade aluminum. Uh, that's what it all, all of our aluminum is. And then everything's CNC bent. So if you look at the top of our baskets, uh, they're actually CNC bent. So it'd give a little more reinforcement. And everything's then welded together at a nice. shop. And then for like the uh, the extension, it's two by two. I believe it is one eighth wall, two by two square tubing that actually goes down and plugs into your ball hitch. Okay. It, it, yeah. It's an it's an example of uh, function over form, but because it's such a a tough beefy thing, and you guys took the time to put some little details in it, that it, it its form ends up being pretty badass. It looks pretty good the way it is. Appreciate but it. Definitely function over form when you look at it. So you know you know it was made to work, and then everything else was a bonus the way it looks and everything. And like on on top of the side by side rocks, you guys have rocks for like the front of the mud boats and. Yes. So we do have some uh, front racks for boats. Uh, it was one of those products we jumped in thinking that it would be a quick sell um, or people would get really interested in it. And it's just so hard to build a universal boat platform that kind of right. works for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but the ones that we have sold, I mean, people absolutely love them. And, you yeah. know, they're great products. Uh, a few years ago, we donated one to DU for uh, – uh, raffle and that guy normally the guy that won it sends us photos two or three times a year when he's boat fishing or when he's duck hunting just because he likes the fact that it's a little bit more stores that you can throw decoys or yeah. jackets or blind bags or anything underneath it yeah yeah i would he, i would get the light bars on there as well or... i would yes, sir. i would think that that yeah like that would that would be a little bit harder you know it's not like um when it comes to the utvs and stuff like that where you know can-am and, and polaris uh honda you know the the major names and, and what people you know buy but when it comes to when it comes to duck boats like there's so many different brands out there right now and and it seems like every year there's a there's a new boat manufacturer coming out so trying to trying to build something that that's a universal fit for the boat world that would be that would be a pretty daunting task i would think yeah, as long as they have a front deck, they basically work. The issue yeah. with it is then you're trying to convince somebody to to drill holes and put screws yeah. into a to a brand new duck boat. And I mean, if it was me personally, I I, I probably wouldn't do it either. No. So no, yeah. see what I do when when it comes like, and I don't do it anymore because I sold my duck boat. But I would torment Mark for like a week and show him what I was going to do, where I was going to drill holes because I wouldn't want to drill holes either. I'm like you, I wouldn't want to. I hate drilling holes and shit. <laughs> And I'd be scared that when I did that, I, that I'd screw it up because that's my thing. I normally do. Um, and I'd be like, this is what I want to do. Does this make sense? 
Yeah. Are yeah, you sure? You screwed up. That's what for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's why you have great friends that I that know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just think up stupid shit, and then I have to run it by everybody else. That that's usually my that's yeah. usually Mark, my Mark's guess. like your mechanical engineer. Yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha. hey, hey, Mark, is this a good idea? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to oh. do this. I want to yeah. do this. Um, on to the next idea at that point. On to the next. I even like that time we were going to build that bridge. Remember that bridge we were going to build across that river out on your deer property? Man, yeah. I tell you what, if if my idea worked on that, it would have been the best bridge ever. <laughs> <laughs> A six year old would be happy to see how did, how did it work out? Did you actually build it? No, we gave up. We lost I, moved, interest. I, I got I got posted out of there. Left. <laughs> we lo we lost interest on it. No, it would have been epic, Philly. It would have been it would have been bomb proof, dude. But uh, a lot more a lot more work than than what I wanted to put into it, and and Merck wanted to put into it, obviously. So um, I think that's the way all hunting ideas go. It's like, man, we really need this. All right, let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, and then fifteen then twenty minutes later, you're like, do we do we really need this? Like, come on. <laughs> Man, let's go to something else. Or better yet, you get halfway through the project and you're like, fuck, what was I thinking? Well, <laughs> well it was limited case... by the mass of the trees. The trees I needed to use to get across that river were weighing four or five thousand pounds a piece. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, even two people, Damien and myself, you would need a lot of leverage and fulcrums yeah. and whatnot to get a four or five thousand pound tree across a what was it, Damien? Fifty five foot span? Oh, easy, easy, easy. Using <laughs> like, like equipment at that point. Yeah, and and the great thing about it was that I was coming up with all these great ideas, um, and it was on Merck's dime. So I had, I yeah, had no, nothing. That's the best way. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had nothing in it. I was just there for technical support. So, uh, so I would think up all this shit and and hey, let's do this and let's do that and and Mark's all Mark's seeing is just dollar figures, dollar <laughs> figures going over in his head. So it was pretty good. It was pretty good, but it was fun, fun couple days. And then we, when we finally dropped, we we had one tree and we were like, okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be the main span. And then Mark dropped it and we cracked it like at the top when it when it what snapped when it hit the oh, other man. side. And we thought we like we we honestly thought it through and we were like no no if we do it this way it should go across and it shouldn't snap but it's still snapping that's when yeah. we lost that's when we lost our courage right there 90 90 to 100 foot tall trees carry a lot of mass when they drop yeah, <laughs> they, they they hit the ground with some force yeah oh, inertia yeah. there when it gets, yeah. it gets just, to the just, bottle just a little bit and then of course that sort of kind of dammed up the river at that point too right so now we got to get down and we got to clean it up and this is one of those days when I was like, man, I got to get in shape because <laughs> obviously Merck's running the chainsaw and I'm, I'm the, I'm the dude that's got to start taking all the brush and moving it to the side. I believe the proper term is gopher. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you, I worked, I worked that day too. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get in shape. Mm, got a big bag of chips. I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what? So what's new? Like what's coming up for, for Swamp Ox? Like, it, is there anything like big trade shows? So like, um, uh, like Delta Waterfowls Expo. Like, are you guys planning on being at that? Because I believe that's in. I believe that's going to be in Louisiana this year. Correct. Uh, so we did. Uh, we did Delta this past summer. Yeah. Uh, in Little Rock, I had a yep. great turnout. Um, got to meet a lot of great people. That's actually where I met the Prairie Bomb Outfitters Group. Um. And we've decided that we are going to go down. I think it's in Baton Rouge, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be there for a couple of years and then over in Nashville for a couple. And then back in the Little Rock, I think we're doing a couple of rotation for each. And as of now, the game plan is definitely to go back down there. Uh, we do a 737 event every year. Uh, so my wife, Hannah, that runs the company, uh, she's actually a world champion duck caller. So she gets. Uh, Hounded to go to 737 every year to yeah. uh, judge their meat calling competition that they have. That's so awesome. we do those two. We've talked about some other ones, and man, it's just finding the time. Uh, yeah, by the time I we bet. both work all week, we don't really feel like traveling, and nothing's really close to Northwest Arkansas. Everything's a three to four or five hour drive. Mm -hmm. uh, so as of now, I know I know Delta is our next one, and if something pops up between now and then, we may may go and hit it up. 
Yeah. I'm I'm planning. Um, obviously, I won't have a we won't have a, a booth. Punisher won't have a booth or nothing there. But I am planning this year that I that I'm going down because last year in Little Rock, just I had friends that were there, um, business acquaintances that were there, and they're sending me pictures of my buddies being there, like Brian McRae, who who the boys all know. He's down there. He's he's one of the the government. Uh, policy guys with delta up here and up here in canada so he's down there and he's sending me pictures of of hanging out with the boys from first light and stuff and i'm like man i really need to be because it looks like it just looked like such an awesome time and obviously the people um the people you want to hang around with right like it's just a big old pile of duck hunters and talking about Christ, duck hunting. E even brian was sending me photos he's down there rubbing elbows with uh, brad sanders at dixie decoys and, yeah, yeah 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 so all those guys are down there so yeah i gotta we we should plan a trip down there like we should go like go down just for the weekend i think y'all should man uh i, I, I think y'all may just have to set up a booth I, I on agree. the back of one of our rigs we, wow. we got enough room back there Maybe maybe we bed extension. Like I tail... think we can get a couple of chairs and get a desk and everything for you. Yeah, yeah. Do a tailgate down there. Or oh, something screw like that. that. We'll just put Damien on the <laughs> fucking drink cart. We'll just push him around all weekend. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I can. <laughs> there I can you go. I like it. I can I like do it. that. I can do that. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so what? So you know what's new? So what do you got coming up for for hunting now, Ryan? Um, do you have any big trips? I know you were just down in down with the crane hunt and stuff like that and then and you sort of alluded to it like you and your wife are are, are busy right and and sometimes you just got to stay home and, and relax and recharge the batteries and stuff so um do you have anything else so big on the go that's so that's the biggest hunt that i'll go on um I, that's actually my first guided hunt ever to go on so having other people do the work was kind of weird for me uh, yeah. Like the first time I ever went on a guy to fishing trip, and the guy was baiting my hook. I'm like, look, man, come on. I can, I, I'm a grown man. I can bait my own hook. Really? Uh, they so, do that on guided probably fishing Probably not trips? another. Oh, man, you go down South Louisiana on a red fishing trip. Oh, yeah, they'll put the shrimp right on the hook for you the whole time. It kind of kind of takes a little bit of your manhood away first couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you know what? This, this actually ain't half bad. Let me sit here, drink some more beer, and just hold the pole back behind you so you put, uh, put a shrimp on it. Uh, That's awesome. But no. The, I, I don't think we'll make another big trip. Uh, we'll be back down to Stuttgart after Christmas. Uh, we'll go down there. And I'm fortunate enough that I get to take a few days off from, from my work. And uh, so we'll be down there for a few days, deer hunting and duck hunting. And then we'll be back up here. It's like this weekend, me and a buddy are going uh, to a couple of ponds that I have, farm ponds, see if we can jump on a few ducks. We normally, normally do pretty good, you know, shoot a handful of ducks a morning, maybe, maybe get a couple of Canada's to come through. Uh, yeah. but yeah, probably won't make another big trip unless somebody calls and says, Hey, you know, yeah, we appreciate everything you've done for us with rack systems. You, you want to discount a hunt. I, I don't think I want to ask my wife if I can, if I can go on another hunt out in West <laughs> Texas or anything <laughs> this year. Well, yeah. if you're wanting to shoot Canada, just come up here. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I had to be very careful, uh, to say Canada is not Canadians. I have been told before yes. by a gentleman from, from Canada. Uh, he set me straight really fast. When I said, "Man, let's let's shoot these Canadians when they were coming in." He was a mutual <laughs> friend or a friend of a friend, and first time I've ever taken this dude hunting. And he looked at me and goes, "What'd you say?" I was like, let's "Shoot these Canadians when they come in." He goes, "Sir, and those are Canada's." I was like, yeah, "Don't don't shoot the Canadians. We're good people." <laughs> same same difference. Like, we got ten minutes talking. Yeah, that's why he said, "Hey, do not shoot Canadians." I'm a Canadian. I was like, "Whoa, man! All right, all right." You know, yeah. uh, so that I have to be very very clear now that I say Canada's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but no, man, I would love to come up there. Oh, I have buddy, a couple I'd... buddies. Uh, they they head up north and hunt, and man, they absolutely love it. But these are guys who have a better situation than me. Uh, they actually they shoot the whole flyway. They start in Canada, at the beginning of season, and they go all follow it all the way down to South Louisiana into Texas, and then about every I think every couple of years they go all the way into Argentina and hunt in Argentina. So, and, oh, yeah, I don't I don't have it that kind of good. I know, I know. Mark and Damien can attest. Lawn care I, service. I, I've oh, I've yeah. got a few a few birds around my part, so. But yeah, buddy, to, I to love the, to the point where yeah, Mark same, same to you ever went to Arkansas. Now. Yeah, buddy. If you ever, if you ever find yourself up this way, if if Swamp Ox ever says, 
hey, listen, we need you to go to Canada and set up a dealership. Um, you make sure it's in the fall. And if you're in Ontario, um, we might we won't get you on many ducks. Um, <sighs> but Canada's, yeah, yeah, we. Well, we buddy, hmm. Di Dime a dozen. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this is as a possible hookup for your company. You want to get involved if you don't want to set up your own dealership up here. Get involved with Royal Distributing in Ontario. Royal Distributing. Remember that yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Royal yeah. Distributing. They are everything, anything, and everything for ATV and snowmobiles up here. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That's cool. okay. That's, I yeah, appreciate that's that. Name. Yeah, Royal I'll, Distributing. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you the information, Ryan, when we get off. Yeah, please, uh, please. When we get off the show, yeah, they're they're actually fuck, and they're huge, like a in Ontario. Like, yeah, huge, huge company in Ontario. Um, yeah, I'll shoot you that information, buddy. Um, yeah. and anything all terrain, oh. like oh man, that'd be dirt much appreciated. Yeah. We have a few dealerships. Do what? Oh yeah, we've had. Well, we don't. So yeah, I think what makes us different than like the other competitors in this market, the other rack systems, is uh, we're an actually a, a full scale custom ma ma manufacturing shop. So right. we're a custom metal shop. We do. We have our own uh, powder coating, sandblasting. We do our own sanding. The only thing we do not do is CNC bending because it's actually cheaper to pay somebody else than buy a few, yeah. few million dollars in equipment. Uh, so if you come to us, uh, well, for example, we have one guy that reached out to my wife last week. He has a military Hummer or Humvee from yep. the late 80s, and he decided that he wants a bed rack that goes from the bed all the way to the front of the cab. So we told him you get it up here to us, and we'll we'll, we'll build you a custom rack system for your Humvee. Uh, we do custom racks for Jeeps. Uh, we have a uh, Forerunner. We have another guy that's wanting his truck done. So that's a great thing about us. If you were to bring us some type, I know there's some dirt bike looking things that are you know off road right. uh, dirt bikes that have kind of fat wheels and stuff, and have a little small metal rack on like those three wheelers. If you had one, you brought it to us. We could build you whatever you wanted. As long as you have the time to leave it with us so we can measure everything, custom fab it, we can we can build whatever you want. Yeah, and there there's an option on your website too, right? There's an option for custom work right on your website. I believe so. I believe yeah. so. The easiest way to do it is just call I mean, my look. wife. Uh, that's our customer service. Uh, uh, so you're actually going to talk to a person. There's no automated service when you call us. You don't yeah. have to press one, two, three, four, five. Uh so you call her and then you kind of talk. School. <laughs> yeah. Old school, yeah, man. That old is school. old school. But we, you know, it gives that personal connection. And that's the biggest thing with us. We, and hell, we've all been on the other side of that line. Um, you call somebody and you have to press one and you have to press four, then you have to press 10. And, you know, you just go through this whole list of stuff that you have to do. Then you finally get to the person you need to talk to and then you lose service or something. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. And every so, time it's the wrong person. And it is the wrong person. They're like, oh, let me transfer you. And then 30 minutes later, the guy finally answers his phone. <laughs> like, hey, I can't help you today. Uh, uh, let me get your name and number. I'll call you back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a, that's not what we're about. We want people to be happy when they call us. Because uh, most of the time, if it's something that you're having a problem with, you're already upset. So there's no reason no reason to make you more upset having to sit on the phone <laughs> and listen to automated service the whole time. Hey, that that's good, man. And people appreciate it. They really uh, And people appreciate that, especially. I hope so. Well, I think I think in today's world where um uh, and maybe the, maybe the wrong term to use here but with all this this woke bullshit that's going on in the world right now and 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 all this other shit that's going on in the world to actually be able to talk to somebody um and and have a conversation and and uh resolution like conflict resolution and figuring out a solution to shit um i think people appreciate that now because we've gone we've gone away from it because a lot of companies thinks that it think that it's more efficient and it's cost saving to do all these to do all these machines and and automated services and stuff like that yeah maybe maybe in the long run from for the for the board of board of directors but the customer the customer really really appreciates to be able to sit down talk to somebody real that knows the product that's the trick too how many times do you call a place and and they have no idea what you're even talking about they're just reading a, a flow chart that's on a computer 
mm -hmm. um, trying to try and, and the great thing is if uh, you call in, if my wife actually doesn't know the answer, which is very seldom that she, she doesn't know the answer, it she just walks right back in the shop. She could talk to our lead fab guy. She talks to our lead install guy. And if that still doesn't help answer the question, we'll put you on uh, on the phone, sit there and do a video chat. And our install guy or our fab guy will sit there and walk you through the whole process of why you're trying to install. And we don't have an issue with sitting there for 30 minutes, you know, walking you through the process. That's uh, amazing. Matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, guy called and uh, had answered the phone and said, hello. You know, he goes, oh, you're real? And she goes, yeah. He goes, All right, <laughs> let me go ahead and just order one then. And he was he was undecided at that, at that point, you know, if he really wanted to order a rag. But as soon as she actually answered the phone, he's like, oh, yeah, I've been trying to call. You know, I'm not going to say the other companies. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. Like, I've been trying to call these other companies for the last two days. And he goes, I can't get anybody on the phone. He said, all right, let's just, this is what, this is my rig. This is what I want. And let's do it. And she's like, okay, filled out the order form and, you know, had one on the truck the next day, heading down to wherever he was at. So. I don't know, man. I think, uh, I think Hannah needs to start throwing out some, uh, some free duck calling lessons too. And, and, uh, that'll probably, that'll probably up your sales a little bit right there. Um, order, order a rack and I'll give you, uh, man, Vincent heard. I'll give you ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you ten minutes of lessons if you order a rack. Uh, I man, that would be a tough sell for her. She she is a hundred percent not a duck caller. She or she doesn't like going to duck call anymore. She if people ask, you know, every once in a while, I guess it takes a special person to ask, and she'll actually blow on one. Yeah. Uh, her cousin now he's eight. He's getting into uh, I guess Main Street duck calling. You know the traditional duck calling. Yep. And uh, she worked with him before Stug Arts Duck Festival Duck Calling. And he decided after that that he's officially hired her as his coach. So I guess now she's going to start coaching the eight-year-old how to, how to blow a duck call. Uh, so we'll see. Man. We'll see how long it lasts. See how it goes. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Ryan. Let's hear it, man. Favorite species to hunt. What is it? Or favorite duck. I don't care about, I don't care about big game. Don't want to hear about big game. Favorite so, duck. favorite duck, man. That is a hard, hard one. Um, if it's if it's for the photo shoot, then it's got to be a greenhead, just just because you know that's what everybody goes after. Uh, if it's it flavor wise, uh, a good wood duck or a teal, I think mm -hmm. have the best flavor over any other duck. Uh, believe it or not, probably my favorite duck to just go and hunt. I know this is probably gonna be an odd one. Y'all probably haven't heard this one. Spoonbill. I was gonna I say love spoonies. shooting spoonies. You got a good yeah, gotta love man, you gotta love shooting spoonies. Uh, I know a lot Never of people kind of hash on them a little I bit because they're I shot oh, my man. first one so this year. Down here, people. Really, really. I've yeah, never so down shot here you got a lot of river sure. birds and well, everybody talks crap about them because they're fish eaters. You know, they're fish eaters, they don't taste good. When you're sitting in the Delta and Stuttgart, they're sitting in the same fields as mallards. They're eating the same grain, the same seed. They taste just as good. And you got a bigger bird that has a good flight on it, you know, so they're kind of quick coming in. You don't have to work them too hard. They'll drop in like a till and they get out of the hole like a till. So I think spoonbills are probably my favorite to shoot just because you get a good mix of a good sized bird and it's a fun shoot. I'd like to shoot a spoon. I'd, I'd, I would. It, but it, it's it's geographical with spoonies, eh? Like some fellas, like the, they're it's like the it's like the the golden bird, and then you know, in some other places, they're like, oh, it's fucking it's fucking spoonbill, yeah, like man. you know I've what I mean? So many people there like that. They're like, oh god, a spoonbill. I'm like, Dude, that's great. Eating. What you're talking about, man? We got a blind full of them, man. This is great, you know. <laughs> I'd love to, I'd love to have one. I'd love to try one. Um, I really in fairness, would. you're not limited to just four. That that's another point. I like birds that I can shoot more than four of, and there I don't go. have to really hear people talk bad if you accidentally shoot a hen, and then you get the whole oh you shot a hen, you know. So uh, with <laughs> well, spoonies, in, nobody really cares about it. So you in, just shoot in six fairness, and go home. The spoonie that I shot this year, it was opening. It was our opening day of duck season. I was out with a good buddy of our good buddy of mine there, Chris Stewart, and I water swatted. Hen spoonie. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it, man. Uh, uh, it, it does. It doesn't like. It does not get any lower than that. I hey, water swatted a hen spoonie. You would yeah, get it, no judgment from me on that, Philly. 
Hey, none same. whatsoever. At least it wasn't a coot. Not, not from here either. <laughs> at least it wasn't yeah, a coot. At least it wasn't yeah. a coot. It wasn't a coot. I still, oh, man, when, that when that we time. were when we were down in Habitat Flats, fuck our poor guide Hayden. God bless this kid. Absolute amazing human, like just phenomenal guide. And we got we got him going about the coots because like coots are like fucking like they're like pigeons in Missouri. Like we're driving by all these like flooded rice fields, flooded corn fields, flooded this, flooded that, and there's like fucking coots everywhere, and you can't shoot them. Yeah, and oh poor no, Hayden, no. we're like, oh here comes a coot, someone fucking <laughs> lace this thing. Oh, we got this poor kid just spinning. We thought he was going to have a coronary right in the blind. <laughs> but Logan McNulty, so wait, our... Logan would be proud. Yeah, no, yeah. go for it, Ryan. Uh, so our slough is actually a closed off slough. It's it's dammed up on both sides essentially. It's a wet season sluts. Well, it holds water year round because of the beavers. Uh, but there's no natural creek or really cooch mainly on your big bodies of water, your lakes and stuff. You don't really see them on the rivers in Arkansas. But anyway, it's closed off from any large scale body of water. And uh, so open weekend back with uh, center time. I fall on like man, I I can't believe we haven't seen our cooch. We only had you know one or two residential coots. Don't know where they came from. Have no clue. Have no clue how the alligators haven't taken them out. And uh, so Saturday didn't see them when I made that comment. Sunday didn't see them. Monday didn't see them. Tuesday, Wednesday. Finally, Thursday, Thanksgiving morning, we hunted a quick little hunt before we headed out. And uh, we had probably about 15 or 16. It's the most coots we've ever seen on our slew. We're like, where the hell did these birds come from? <laughs> you know, we're just staring at them. They're swimming through the decoys and hanging out and stuff. And yeah, so it. That's it. They you know what birds. that is. They're very, that's very some dude. Birds. That's a dude from California that's bringing those birds over to you, man. He's, <laughs> he's, 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 yeah. Well, that's like an East Coast delicacy. Um, listen, I got to stop you because you said something there, and and I've really got to talk about it. Fucking alligators. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have. Uh, I know it's kind of crazy. Um, so you know, wild pigs are a big deal. Yeah in south arkansas we just we have wild pigs everywhere and but if you get up to stuttgart there's like a hard line in the sand where the wild pigs just don't cross so for some reason we don't have wild pigs but we have alligators um so i at one point we had uh, about a 13 footer in our reservoir we have about a 25 acre reservoir and bio Mita, the actual bio runs through cuts our property in half and so we think she came out of the bio. Uh, we saw her for about a year, and then she disappeared. Uh, in our back slough, we have a couple 10-footers that we've seen hanging out. And then my father-in-law, who uh, has to clean out the pipes from the beavers down them up, he has a, he has about a four- or five-foot friend that he'll be waist-deep water, and this alligator will pop up 10 feet away from, hang out for 30 minutes, just watch him the whole time. And my father-in-law just climb out of the water, you know, and the dude's just like, all right, see you later, man. Guy kind of, kind of gives him a little wave and just swims that. off. <laughs> He's no, measuring them. Thank you. <laughs> no <laughs> measure them fucking out. That's what I told way. Him. He's measuring them up. <laughs> Not I, I would legit have the big fucking dirty hairy 44 <laughs> mag with like a 36 inch fucking barrel and like 400 grain slugs strapped to my chest. Buddy, I, I tell you what. Also, what's funny? Doing that. If you want to have yeah, so he's if, you, up, yeah. if you want to have a good time and I mean you and your buddies, just laugh your ass off. Bring me down to your fucking refuge, and then let me see an alligator, and you watch me freak the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? No way, dude. No. Man, we've had a hard pass. Yeah. Early, hard pass. early season, you know, right, right at the beginning of the season, we, you know, we're still a little warm. We'll get up in the 60s, 70s. So they're going dormant a little bit, slowing down. But, we, yeah, we've had them swim through our decoys and kind of just check us out. Uh, but the funniest part is they kind of leave us alone. You know, they'll get close, get curious, and kind of look at us. Uh, but, like, the 10-footers, they she always stays kind of way off. And that never comes around. As soon as we are – we have a little jumbo that we run into the slough. And as soon as she kind of hears that, she kind of drifts away from us. All right. Uh, but I had a beaver come in and slap me in the duck blind last year. <laughs> We're sitting there duck hunting. And, you know, we had high water. It was probably a little over knee deep. Yeah. And I was looking back 
the wrong direction, obviously. And about that time, just bam, slapped the shit out of me. And I, I was leaving the, I was leaving the water. I was walking on water about that time. My father-in-law was looking at me like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" I was like, "Man, beaver slapped me." He's like, "He didn't." And he looked. He's like, "Oh shit, there's a beaver swimming away." I'm like, "Yeah, slap me, hit me in the leg, man." We call that a Canadian yes. bitch slap. So, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I got, uh, I got a good beaver story. Um, Get your mind well, out of sure us. Um, I was wondering where we we're going with that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I I do have a good one on the Ottawa River, but uh, we'll save it for another time. Um, we're almost at that sixty-minute mark, fellas, and uh, I think this is as good as areas or as good as time as any as the as the call this one uh, for tonight. Ryan, buddy, I can't thank you enough for coming on, and and Phil, I can't thank you enough for for you know doing the leg work and 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 setting this up and talking to hannah and introducing me and the whole bit um this is a great show a lot of good laughs and i, and I know the millions and millions of fans are going to really enjoy it so um we'll do a quick around the table and then uh, give you the last word ryan uh mark to you buddy uh two things first ryan good to meet you uh you seem like a pretty good dude and you guys got a good company there i've been looking sizing up your your gear over the last little bit and uh, if i did have a side by side i'd set it up that swamp kitchen is something else i gotta <laughs> say it holds a 35 pound sack of crawfish and uh <laughs> uh i'm sure i could convince my wife to give you uh the turkey fryer attachment for free that comes along with it also <laughs> we, we just want the crawfish you just want you the crawfish why? I got to take a minute. I'll tell you here. what, if you buy the cooker, I will I will personally send you a 35 pound sack of crawfish. How about that? Jesus. <laughs> See, wife wouldn't I, complain. <laughs> we we got to take a moment here to just um, appreciate the American attitude. And that is something that I've brought up on this show a million times before. Just fucking go big or go home. Like that's, that's the way it, it is. Man. Man. That's the way it is. Like if you're gonna do it, do it right. I love one hundred percent every Sorry, day. Mark. Every day. Sorry, Mark, I jumped in on you there. And the uh, the second thing I want to do, sorry to, to drift off from our our conversation and point here, but uh, I just wanted to mention Craig Mintz and Real Geese Decoys. Uh, mm -hmm. There in the last week. Uh, I said I wanted to get some silos. Yes, you heard that right. I wanted to get some silos. And uh, Damien immediately put me in a conversation with Craig. And uh, within minutes, I think we had uh, – we figured out what we wanted and how much it was going to be. And, and uh, anyway, so we ran into some issues with shipping. But I got to say, Craig and his team really stepped up and jumped over walls mm -hmm. to uh, get those decoys to me. Anyway, they're down in the uh, in my garage now, waiting for their next first hunt. Yeah. So, Neil said I didn't have to, to mention Craig and his and their customer service because it's, it's legendary. If anyone who ever deals with them, yeah, everyone always comes out on the positive side. So, I just wanted to bring that up. No, that's awesome, Mark. Thanks, buddy, Billy. I feel that because Mark hunted over my real geese, <laughs> I play a vital role. And converting him to the dark side. Now you, now you got, now you got to wait for Merck to invite you on a hunt so you can fuck up his decoy bag like we <laughs> right? did to yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ryan, Fuck, absolute, up. absolute pleasure to have you on, bud. Like, it was, it was amazing being down there in Missouri and like actually being able to lay hands on your product and, and talking to your wife. Like we were messaging back and forth on the the company account. Like I. I there were so many like amazing photo opportunities I could have had, like having straps hanging off the racks and stuff. And I, I'm still kicking myself to this day for not getting those photos. But um, again, amazing product. And I can attest like the durability, like you can legit hang off these things. You can pile so much stuff on them. Just the versatility, you know, hanging straps, hanging decoys, you know, Again, doubling the amount of crap you can carry out when you're going hunting, like on the side by side, just it's just an amazing idea. And we wish you guys nothing but the best in the future. And we just hope to see some more and better products coming down the pipe. Ryan, buddy, appreciate to you. It, appreciate it. 
Uh, all right, guys. Thank you all. I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and talk with you all. Great guys. If you are ever in northwest Arkansas, man, come and hit me up. Uh, if you're looking for that crane, crane hill hunt, definitely check out Prairie Bomb Outfitters. Uh, talk to Vince. He'll take care of you. As a matter of fact, before I got on the show, I texted him like, hey, I'm going to give you a little plug. Just want to make sure it's okay. He's like, man, love it. I was like, all yeah. right, here we go. So, but yeah, if, if y'all end up getting side by sides, reach out to Hannah and she'll take care of y'all, hook you up with some, with some good deals. And uh, if you know any dealerships up there, man, just, just let us know. And we'll figure out how to get it across the border one way or another. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. I'm going to get that to you, Ryan, buddy. Um, we've all said it. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, and to everybody listening, this is Ryan's first podcast. So it, it is, is a, it is a big deal that he, that he chose us to, uh, to do it. So, uh, you know, not a big, well, no big deal. You know. Let's let be honest. His wife said, "Go do this." <laughs> it, it, it was. It was a little nicer than that. She was. She was like, "Hey, would you be willing to do a podcast?" And I was like, "Is anybody else in the shop going to do it?" Time. Yeah. She yeah, was like, yeah. "I don't think anybody else in the shop yeah. is going to do it." I was like, "Well, if nobody else will do it, I mean, just ask. If nobody else will do it, I, I sure, I guess I will." She texted me back like, "I hell, I, she didn't even ask anybody." She's like, "Okay, no. you're doing it. Nobody else wants to do it." It yeah, was like yeah, two yeah. seconds later. And I was like, all right. Smile and nod, bro. Yeah. Hey, Smile buddy. and nod. Hey, we've all been there, bud. Yeah, the best way to get through life. Yeah, absolutely. Ryan, buddy, thanks so much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Appreciate check out it. Swamp Ox. Um, we've got a ton of followers in the States. And if you're not following this, check it out. We once the episode drops on, on Monday, um, we'll have everybody tagged. And uh, you'll be able to check them out. Go go check out their website. Mark was sharing the page. They've got some really cool options. And listen, um, if somebody please buy one of those liquor carts and put a bottle of Bird Dog Whiskey Peach on it and send me a picture of it, okay? Um, listen, this is episode 168 of The Union. We are not experts and we'll never pretend to be. We're just a bunch of dudes that love hanging out and talking with good people about duck hunting and everything that comes with it big love surround yourself with good people chat with you next week